Hello chaps and chapesses, and this week we're going to talk about the new Rio Elite Bonefish and the new Rio Elite Permit. Nine weight, which one is right for you? Well, we've got to that stage of the year, the springtime, where I'm beginning to think about my first saltwater trip of the year. Invariably, that means I'm gonna need a new fly line. When I'm fishing down in the Seychelles, I'm normally only carrying a nine and an 11 weight these days. So the nine weight is my go-to everything rod. I use it for everything. So whether I'm fishing for bonefish, whether I'm fishing for triggerfish, whether I'm fishing for bumphead parrotfish, whether I'm fishing for milkfish, that is the rod that covers a multitude of species because I don't have the luxury of being able to carry a seven weight for bonefish and an eight weight for triggers or something like that. So I need one rod that'll do it all. One rod to do it all. And that is the nine weight. But the difficulty these days is trying to find that fly line that matches the do it all approach. There are so many different fly lines on the market, so many different tapers, and fly lines are one of the most individual things of all. Each fly line and each taper suits people in different ways. What may suit one person may not necessarily suit another. So I would always advise everybody to try lots of different fly lines and try lots of different tapers on the rod that you're going to use and see which one suits you best. Now I've done that, I've tried a lot of different brands, I've tried a lot of different makes, I've tried a lot of different tapers. And the two that I've narrowed it down to are these two, the Rio Bonefish and the Rio Permit. So what is it that particularly attracts me to these fly lines? Well, it boils down to the fact that Rio have put an enormous amount of R&D and technology into the new coatings on their fly lines, and they have a profile for everything. They have a huge quantity of different profiles for lots of different jobs, and they make it really quite easy. But there are two scientific aspects to what they are doing at the moment which I find particularly interesting. The first is their direct core technology. This direct core means that when you strip set your fish, because that is obviously what we do in the salt, we do not trout set, we strip set. And when you do that, that means there is a straight line between you and the fish. And if you have a fly line which has lots of stretch in it, it means that your penetrating power on your initial strip set is gonna be far less than if you have a fly line with very little stretch. That means that when you strip set at 50%, it's 50% which is going straight into that hook and penetrating into the fish's mouth. That means you're gonna have a far better hookup rate. The second thing that I have found incredibly impressive, especially on the technical trout that I was using earlier in the season for trout and a couple of other lines that I've been using, which have this elite slick cast coating is that it's one of the slickest lines I've ever used. It literally flies through your fingers. What's brilliant about this slick cast coating is it is constantly coming out of the fly line itself. So it's not just a layer on the outside which can be washed off or scraped off. It is always in the actual substance of the fly line, which means your fly line is going to remain slick for a very long time. I like the sound of that. I think it sounds great. And now that I have been using some of their other lines for quite a long period of time, I can attest to the fact that that is actually true. So that is why I've gone for these. Both of these fly lines are obviously designed for specific purposes. But I'm using a nine weight for a multitude of different species, so I'm not quite sure which one is going to suit me best. The bonefish has got a longer front taper, about seven feet, which means that it's going to have a more gentle turnover, which is obviously great for smaller flies at range. The permit has got a slightly more aggressive front taper, not by much, because you've still got to have a very gentle presentation for permit, but it is going to make the difference when turning over slightly heavier flies, such as the crab and shrimp patterns that we would normally associate with permit. My dilemma, is that I'm fishing for trigger fish, potentially permit, 
but also bonefish. Granted, they're normally bigger bonefish down there, but at the same time, I've got to juggle between the two. So that is why today I have brought both of these down so that I can put them on a rod and see how they cast. And then I can figure out which one is going to suit me best. So before I get set up, let's have a quick look at the actual specifications of these two lines. So the bonefish has a six and a half foot to seven foot front taper. It's nice and long for gentle presentation. It has a relatively fast head that backs that up. The head length in total is 49.5 feet on this nine weight. It then has a handling taper or rear taper of about 12 feet and then about 50 feet of running line. So the overall length of the line is about 100 foot. Essentially, this line is designed to be able to pick up a fly quickly, deliver it at speed, at distance, and provide a nice gentle presentation. It also comes in this rather attractive tri-colour configuration. So the front of the fly line is a tan sand colour. It then has a rather attractive orangey section in the middle. Now this section is particularly useful for sighting across an open bonefish flat because when you've chucked that line out quite often it's difficult to see exactly which direction or where it's headed. Therefore this colour allows you to see exactly where the line is, it's quite handy. Then it goes into this uh, blue colour for the back of the rear taper. The permit has a slightly different configuration, in fact it has a similar kind of front taper of about six feet, but then that backs onto a much larger middle section with a nine foot body, a 20 foot main body and a 13 foot rear taper with an overall head length of 48 feet. This longer rear taper will make it much easier to pick up and put down again if you miss that initial shot which is quite a useful thing to have. Again the fly line has this rather fetching tricolour very similar to the bonefish but it also comes in a different colour configuration for those permit aficionados who want a nice dull coloured fly line so that has a sand front taper and then it goes to a camo midsection so if, if you're trying to be as stealthy as possible then maybe that's the one you would prefer to go for. Me, I like a bit of flash orange so I can see where it's gone. Just so that I'm making it reasonably realistic I've brought some flies down with me, I've got some itchy triggers here which have got a dumbbell eye on the front and then I've got some slightly larger shrimp variants here to test out the abilities of both of these lines and throwing a slightly larger fly. So without further ado, let's go and put them on a rod. I've got a trigger fish leader which is fairly thick, get this on this rod. So this is the bonefish taper. Obviously I'm going to expect there to be a little bit of a line memory in this because it's February in the UK and this line is designed to not be used in these kind of temperatures. It's actually much colder than it looks. <laughs> There's nothing quite like a new fly line. It's a wonderful feeling to be able to put a brand new fly line on a rod and cast it for the first time. Not only am I excited to see how it casts, but it's just that initial mm, that I love so much. I have got myself an itchy trigger with the hook cut off. I do not wish to be catching sheep. And we're all set. Let's go and cast this in the field. So let's see what this thing does. So I've got my nine weight Zephyrus here. Well, I've got to say, it's slick. It's very slick. So there's the front of the tri taper. Well, that's punching out a line with out too much difficulty at all. So I do notice that the front taper is a little bit heavier than my previous bonefish line but it loads it fast but it's not a short taper which I hate. So I can still aerialize lots of line under control and then when I shoot it wow it just goes. So 
So the front taper does load quite quickly, creates a nice loop, and then as soon as I lob it, it just goes, and it goes and it goes. That's lovely. So the Itchy Trigger is a fairly heavy fly. It has got a lead dumbbell eye on it. And it's gonna shoot without too much difficulty at all. The wind is making it quite realistic. Yeah, that's all gone. Okay, that's a very nice line. So there's a couple of things I always like to make a point of testing when I'm testing a new bonefish line. The first is how that front taper behaves, because with a bonefish line or a line which is going to present something reasonably gently, I don't like compacted short tapers. I like a front taper which is long enough to give me a nice presentation a nice smooth presentation which is going to drop that fly down nice and gently so i don't like those kind of bullet tapers and initially this line does not feel like that it does load very quickly very quickly and i don't know how they've managed to get a line that loads quite that fast which doesn't feel like a bullet taper but this one doesn't I am actually pleasantly surprised because I was a little bit dubious when I first read that, that this was going to be a, a line with a lot of weight immediately behind the head. No, it doesn't do that. It loads nicely. So the second thing I like to know is how quickly can I put that fly to target? And this is where that combination of a delicate front taper along with a slightly longer belly to me comes into play. So I want to be able to pick that line up quickly. It loads the rod and then I can shoot it and I can shoot it to target. So that's the second thing for me, which is key in a bonefish line. And the last thing is what happens if I muck up my shot. And this is actually why I don't like short head tapers. I don't like tapers which have got a lot of very thin running line on the back of them because they are a pain if you've, if you've shot it, that's great. But if you shot it and you've got to bring it back, you've got to strip in all the running line before you can pick it up and make your cast. And that I have found quite annoying on lines in the past. So this line, if I take it to the edge of the orange head and I punch it, I can pick that up and put that down again very quickly. And if I'm a little bit further back than that, again, I can pick that up. That's probably 15 yards, something like that. 15 yards. Sorry, I can't work in feet. I'm British, you know, still yards. I suppose we should be meters, but I can't really think in that either when it comes to fly lines. But yeah, in yards, I'll work it out later when I look at it. But that's probably about one, two yards into the blue running line or the handling head. And I can still pick that up and I can still punch it. I like that. I like that quite a lot. So, so far for me, this Rio Bonefish line is ticking all the boxes. And I, <laughs> I have to say, it, it really is slick. I mean, they weren't lying. It's, it's slick, it's smooth. Yeah, it's good that. Now, let's try the permit line. For this one, Got a bit of a bit of a lunking fly. Got a big dumbbell head on the front. So we'll see how this one casts. 
So my initial first impression is that this line is thicker. I don't know whether that's just me, but it feels, it feels thicker, it feels chunkier. Straight off the bat, the front end of the taper is, um, it's got more, more thickness to it. Yeah, it barely notices the fact that it's got that bigger fly on the end, I have to say. <laughs> Loads quicker, much quicker, and fires out much faster. I was thinking that these lines were gonna be much more similar in nature, but this really is very, very different. Yeah, that just, just fires it out, absolutely fires it out. Again, it doesn't feel like the fly is being delivered too roughly. I kind of figured that actually it's still delivering to target quite nicely, but it does turn over the bigger flies a lot more easily. Yeah, that's a very different beast, that one. It loads up, if I take it to where's the orange, the orange the orange starts there, oh, actually the orange starts a bit further back on this one. Yeah, that just cruises out, absolutely cruises out. You can feel immediately that the front taper turns over the fly very nicely, but immediately behind that front taper there's a lot more weight behind the line. And you can feel it as soon as you pick the first cast up, it loads straight away. And then it just, it just fires it out. It really does. And again, we go back to talking about the, uh, the rear handling taper. It tapers much further down the running line. I need to check the diagram and see exactly where that comes in. But to me, that line feels like it, the head goes on a little bit further than the bonefish taper. The bonefish taper is obviously designed for fishing much, much smaller flies than a permit taper. And so therefore it is more refined. It certainly is a much more gentle presentation, but the sacrifice of that is it probably loads up a little bit slower. And I think I like that when I'm fishing for bonefish. But this line, this is just easy to cast. I mean, I'm using my nine foot Zephyrus. Granted, it's not the softest rod in the world, but it's certainly not the stiffest either. And that loads straight off the orange tracking line and just literally just fires it out. Again, you can feel the slick cast coating. You can feel it just vanish through the rings. It does kick over a bigger fly effortlessly. Boom. Even on a short cast. Short shot for permit. Sometimes they get close before you know they're there and that line will still load up under close quarters and drop that bigger fly straight down where I want it to. That's actually quite an impressive line, I have to say. But, you know, if you load it up straight away, that line just feels like it really, it just wants to go and go and go and go. Very interesting. Very interesting and not actually what I thought was gonna happen at all. I thought the permit line specifically would probably have more of a, a punch on the front taper, but I didn't expect it to be able to deliver a bigger fly with such delicate presentation. Well done, Rio. That is a spectacular piece of kit. Short load, long load. It'll hold, hold the line in the air, no problem at all. And it's just, it is, it's effortless. It's absolutely effortless, that line. Very interesting. Hmm, very interesting indeed. 
So in conclusion guys, had them both out on the field, chucked flies on both of them, pretty heavy weighted flies, and I have to say I'm I'm quite surprised. I'm quite surprised because I thought that the one that I would want is the bonefish because I normally like longer bellied, long tapered fly lines. But actually, it's the permit that I think I'm going to go for. And the reason I'm going to do that is when I'm heading down to Providence shortly, most of the flies I'm going to be fishing with are going to be bigger. Not necessarily heavier, but bigger. Also, even the bonefish are of a slightly larger size. And I think the ability to switch quickly between bonefish flies, triggerfish flies, uh, permit flies, and bumphead parrotfish flies. So there's going to be a lot of crabs and shrimps and stuff like that in there. Some of them will have dumbbell eyes. I think the permit for me is going to be the one because it was effortless turning over those bigger flies at range and it also still has that very light presentation which I have to say I was pretty surprised about. Don't get me wrong, this is a fabulous line. This bonefish line is great. The longer taper is going to make this far more suited for specifically bone fishing. Funny enough, that's what it says on the box. Let me put that into context. If you're going to end up, say for example, fishing on the hard coral flats of Turnif Atoll where it's really skinny water bone fishing and you're fishing at tailing fish and you need to be using very small flies or the flats of Los Roques, the pancake flats of Los Roques or somewhere like that, then this bonefish taper is going to be absolutely the one to have. I think the new slick cast coating is fabulous. It really is remarkably smooth as it shoots out the rings and I reckon I'm probably getting easily another five yards on my cast without even trying. I'm putting so little effort into it and it's just shooting through the rings. Now the test will be whether this coating that they talk about does actually do what it says it does and that is what I'm really hoping. It's going to be durable, it's going to last longer and also this slick cast coating is going to remain on the line. Now if that happens then I think they're absolutely on to a winner. So in terms of cost these lines are not cheap this one is 129 pounds and 99 pence. This one is also 129 pounds and 99 pence. But if I get more than one season out of these lines, then they've paid for themselves. As always, I hope you found that little video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. That was not a very good cast.